Joining me now on Telecom TV are Bob Monkman of Intel and Heather Kirksey of Linux Foundation Networking. Bob and Heather, good to see you both again. Bob, how can CSPs unlock the value of the open source ecosystem to drive the speed of innovation and, and service delivery? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that OS, the open source communities are really good at is being able to very quickly prototype and showcase early functionality. And I think that the telcos in this standardization process could really collaborate generally uh, much more effectively with the open source community by leveraging that ability to make the process of finalizing the specifications more efficient and in getting it done quicker. And Heather, how can both communities do more to help each other? Yeah, I mean, I think what Bob was saying, you know, I would point to that, you know, back when I did standards, you know, we'd spend all these years writing a standard and then we would come to implementation and find problems. So having a more early, often iterative uh, feedback loop on, you know, some of the things the telcos are trying to do, I think is really useful. You know, we're, um, we're seeing some work where, you know, various standards bodies and, and telco, you know, in the you know, open source communities are actually, you know, working together to improve standards and to get standards implemented um, in open source. Heather, earlier this year, there was a memorandum of understanding signed between Etsy and the Linux Foundation. Are any open source projects yet utilizing the results of this MOU? So Bob was talking about this in his presentation, uh, actually just this morning, uh, but the ONAP community is implementing some of the Etsy NFE SOL um, specifications um, in uh, some of the ONAP modules. You know, we also have had some discussions around, um, you know, we, we have uh, co-located uh, testing events in the past, and we're sort of talking about the possibility of doing that again, um, and then, um, We've done a lot of work also around collaborating on testing initiatives between OPNFE and, and Etsy as well. Right, and that was actually a great example, the testing, yeah. uh, where the open source community, the OPNFE community yeah. in particular, uh, came back to Etsy and said, look, we have found the need to develop some performance tests uh, and some other you know, benchmarking uh, kinds of uh, applications and, and uh, protocols, and we'd like to create a document around this right. and kind of formalize and standardize what we yeah. came up with. And so the Etsy community was very open to that, and we worked together with Etsy and actually wrote a specification document from the input that came from the OPNFE community. Very effective. Heather, what new technology areas are emerging that we think telcos are going to need more help on from the open source community? So uh, I think there are a couple areas. Yeah, one is certainly around um, interoperability and sort of improving sort of the actual operational usage of you know, the, the open source we've got. And I think certainly looking ahead, um, cloud native and CICD are, are big, I think, technology so that you know, telcos need to start adopting more you know, as they really become even more agile. Um, and I know that those are both things that are going to require mindset shift as well as significant new skill sets. Yeah, and, and these cloud native technologies are actually uh, very uh, supportive of some of the key, like serviceability, for example, in, um, in telco networks. So the ability to do live sys you know, software system upgrades. So the packaging uh, of containerized microservices it makes the whole uh, way that software is written much more modular. The ability to dynamically update individual components or modules uh, of these microservices allows uh, really a lot safer system upgrades uh, in the field for telcos. So this is this whole way of packaging and uh, upgrading and, and maintaining the service uh, is, is a great lesson that can be leveraged from the open source community. Yeah. And it's going to require a lot sort of of rethinking and redesign. You know, I mean, you know, if you look at sort of a lot of what happened when we first started NFE is, you know, people took 
basically PNFs and dump them in VMs, and you know we didn't necessarily reap all the value, would you know, because we didn't quite you know necessarily understand you know uh, the technologies well enough to make different decisions. So the the process of kind of going cloud native is definitely it's going to be a new one. There are different paradigms as well as you know new technologies, but you know it's like once you get there, the the benefits are are very high. I don't believe we're seeing cloud native technologies in any of the standards processes yet. Is this going to be something that is is purely driven by the open source community? I, mean, I think that you'll see some standards around kind of like telecom usage of it or you know sort of telecom interfaces to other things. Um, you know, I'm not sure I'd want to see a standards body start trying to specify things that you know Kubernetes already does. I mean, one of the things that we really get out of using something like Kubernetes is, you know, you hear a lot about skill shortages and resource shortages. You know, all of a sudden the telcos, by using some of these technologies, have access to what's being produced by all the engineers of the hyperscalers, you know, Google and Amazon and, and Microsoft and Lyft. And, you know, they actually kind of almost get access to those developers by proxy, you know, sort of through, um, you know, through open source. But, I mean, there are just, I mean, there are a lot of, you know, telecom standards. I mean, so, for example, 5G, people are expecting to deploy a lot of that with the, you know, cloud native technologies that exist, but there's still a lot of specification work for, you know, how 5G networks should look, certainly, you know, on the radio side, um, all of the, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, it's not that they're not there necessary. It's, you know, standard, someone said in the presentation yesterday, standardize, you know, where standards are appropriate, you know, write code where code is appropriate and um, get your network supplied. <laughs> mm -hmm. What new technology areas are emerging that we think telcos are going to need more help on from the open source community? And are, are any of these projects yet underway? Yeah, exactly. And I think, it, you know, um, one of the things that we're seeing now is a new initiative called the Common NFE Telco Task Force that is, has formed to address some of the interoperability gaps that have been found in NFE and slowing down network transformation. So we need to solve that. And so the way that that organization is being set up from the beginning is working directly with the ecosystem that's going to implement the recommended changes and we're going to be simultaneously, and this is one of the points I made in my presentation, we really need to simultaneously define the requirements, uh, what we're trying to achieve, and do the implementations and create the validation protocols at the same time. And so that's going to be a much more effective process in closing these gaps and getting rid of the fragmentation, increasing the interoperability, and accelerating network transformation. Yeah. Yeah, I think the CNTT work is a is a great example of that, and also just sort of the the speed um, with which it's moving. You know, it was it was announced at ONS um, North America what about like six months ago, mm -hmm. and it's going to have a first um, release of documentation at the upcoming ONS. So like six weeks to get you know sort of initial specs out, um, and then we you know sort of have a plan to also start addressing things like cloud native and things are already feeding into OPNFV and our um, you know OPNFV verification program. So the the feedback loop is very strong there, and we've got both standards folks, specification folks, network operators and developers kind of all there in the same room doing that. And I, I think it's been really helpful. Yeah, I do see this hesitance though uh, to jump all in on cloud native yeah. with the notion, let's do that in phase two. So, yeah. so I'm hoping that we, we won't be too overly cautious yeah. because we really need to move the leverage of cloud native yeah forward more quickly, yeah. right? So I think that we're seeing this hesitance to, let's get a first model based on virtualization, then we'll do cloud native, because that'll be different and we're not quite sure. Yeah. I think we, I think that's okay, but let's not let that that hesitance, yeah. you know, hold us back. We need to. Yeah, need I mean, to I think you're seeing just kind of the newness of it as a technology for the service providers. So, you know, I think they want to maybe know a little bit more so they know that they're getting it right. Um, on the other hand, if we don't go on and make some common decisions, we'll end up what we ended up with before with you know 50 different flavors of a possible stack. So um, I think that's, you know, we're gonna have to figure out how to address that because probably, 
I mean, I'm thinking we actually might need to do some proof of concepting within OPNFV that actually then will help us make better decisions in the cloud native reference architecture exactly. with uh, CNTT. Yeah, and that's the most exciting thing about this process yeah. is we're going to be able to prototype some of these validation protocols yep. and convince ourselves whether or not yep. we're closing those gaps. Yeah. Yeah. Final question to the both of you. Are you optimistic or pessimistic about the way ahead? I'm always optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm conditionally optimistic. <laughs> I, I really see the spirit and the commitment and the excitement around the, the CNTT effort, for example. And I think it's going to be a proving ground for what's possible with this tight collaboration. So I'm, based on what I've seen so far, I'm optimistic. Yeah. I, it's all about execution. Yeah, that's the thing I need to say. I mean, with the caveat that we have to execute, you know, but I think that there's a lot of energy happening right now, kind of coming in from CNTT, I think both into the standards and, and open source groups. And so that's you know where my optimism comes from, but you are right. Implementation, execution um, will, will be the proving ground. Right. Heather and Bob, thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.